Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media and Yelp. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the content creation business, we learn through lessons and stories. Today we have an incredible episode. National Restaurant Association, a special shout out to Toast, the primary sponsor of this show, our primary technology partner for believing in this show. Because of this, we are at a historic location in Chicago. So National Restaurant Association, we are here for Restaurant Influencers, and we are here with my good friend, Deuce Raymond of Sweet Baby Ray's Catering and Restaurant. Deuce, welcome to the show. So good to see you, Sean. That's so awesome you're in Chicago, man. Isn't it? Well, thank yeah. you to Entrepreneur. Thank you to Toast. Uh, thank you to Yelp. We're super excited to share your story. What I love about your story is that you're going to tell it. So <laughs> <laughs> for the, the guests on this show, I start with a random question, a random question that our, our listeners and our viewers know. But where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? It's got to be... Chicago Stadium where the Bulls play. Chicago Stadium where the Bulls play. Okay, so Chicago Stadium, we're going to put the NRA, we're going to do the NRA in the Chicago Stadium. Mm -hmm. But we're only going to invite the best of the best, the people that listen to this show, the restaurant influencers. We're going to have Toast sponsor the event, Entrepreneur is going to put it on, and I'm going to put you center court. Michael Jordan music plays, I'm going to give you two minutes. Who is Deuce Raymond? Why is Deuce Raymond on restaurant influencers? You ready? Let's go. All right, let's go. All right, I'm Deuce Raymond, and most people know me because my family started Sweet Baby Ray's. My dad's the chef that created the recipe, and that kind of changed the way I went down the path. And I actually said I didn't want to be a chef growing up because my dad was always working in restaurants, nights, weekends, holidays, and I said, I'm not going to do that. Um, but actually, over the years, I developed a passion for food, and I ended up going down that path. Um, everybody knows Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's, my uncle and my dad started back in the early 80s with $2,000, uh, high school education and a dream is how they tell the story. And in 20 years, they grew it to a $33 million brand. As we sit here today, Sweet Baby Ray's is a $675 million brand and they sell more sauce than the next seven sauces combined. Insane. It's just unbelievable. They hold a 46 share in the market. That's more than Coke holds in soda, more than Hellman's holds in mayonnaise. It's just an unbelievable story. When they sold, when we sold the business, we retained the rights to use the name for restaurants and catering. And that's what we're doing now. We started this restaurant in 2005 and we've been slowly growing ever since a lot of ups and downs over those last 15, 20 years. And, um, you know, we're, we're pushing on. We're, I've never been more excited to be in business as I am right now. You know, what's, I mean, I have goosebumps because I'm so excited to be here. The fact that we're here because of media, because we're, we're here because of storytelling. And really why we created this show was to teach restaurant owners, people in the food business, food entrepreneurs, that there's a new economy out there. And really what I love about your story and what you have been able to do with your team now is you've really been able to tap into storytelling and you've done TikTok to do that. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us, I know that you started working with Gary Vaynerchuk's Sasha Group, which Correct. is a small business group. Can you explain the uh, the Sasha Group, why you brought them in and what your TikTok strategy was? Sure, I mean, a big reason why we brought them in was because you know, I think like a lot of small businesses, we dabbled with social media. We never put the attention to it to really grow anything on it. And I was ready. I've, I watched enough of Gary Vee. I watched enough of what you do to say, <laughs> this is it. This is the time we're going to take it seriously and do it. Um, some of the PPP money actually helped us do that. You know, gave me the say, you know, the confidence just to say, we're going to put the money and the focus on growing our social media brand to gain more business. Uh, and that's what we did. We contacted Sasha Group. They were awesome to work with. They gave us a playbook and really the concept uh, of a, doing a show on TikTok. And we started with it. And, you know, it's just been for the last 12 months, Every week, Matt and I sit down, we plan it out, and we work on what worked, what didn't work, and it's been a huge learning experience, but it's very exciting. You know, like I said, in the for the last 15, 20 years, we're always posting on Instagram, posting on Facebook, and everything like that. TikTok is totally different. 
when I walk into a social setting in my hometown, people say, dude, so I just watched your TikTok. That's so awesome. Keep posting those videos. I get so much more recognition now than I ever have on anything I've yeah. ever done. People are on TikTok watching this, enjoying it. It's just, it's, um, it gives us motivation to keep on going. You know, like you said, the followers have come. You know, we have maybe seven, eight, I don't even know, thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah. We have 250,000 on a TikTok. A quarter of a million you know? followers on TikTok. And it's a global audience. And even though it's a global audience, you're making an impact in your community. Oh, for sure. And I think that's what's really important. And what, what I love about your TikTok strategy is you guys created a show. Absolutely. So give, give the, the listeners and the viewers an idea of this North Star content. Mm -hmm. Making sure that no matter what, every single week you guys are putting out an episode. You're going you're gonna to pepper in other content, but talk about the pillar content. So the pillar content really works for what we do because we shoot one main video a week. And from that video, we get uh, pictures to post on Instagram. We get reels for Instagram. Plus, we get the main TikTok post and then other shorter clips. Like you'll see, we'll do like a blooper shot where I drop something on the floor or someone says something funny, or I, my favorite one was it took us nine takes to do a simple outro, and I, it was just so funny. But Matt caught it all on camera, and we used that as more content, and you know, those type of videos do well. And what people, I have a, a hard time explaining this. Well, do you see sales from it? We do see some sales from it, but it's about building brand awareness. Yeah. It's bringing more people into our world, directing them to our website, and, it just, for whatever reason, right now, TikTok is the one platform that gets more traction than anything else we've ever done. So for me, I'm super curious because the way that you guys have organically grown your TikTok page, you know, we've had Sam the Cooking Guy on who built this huge YouTube following over 3 million. He's starting to gain a lot of traction on mm -hmm. TikTok. We talk about short form video all the time. So barbecue like a boss, give us the, the schedule, the release schedule. Well, because today we're going to put a link in the show notes. We did a behind the scenes episode mm -hmm. where actually you guys can watch Deuce and Matt make a TikTok video because so much of what we're trying to do with this show is to bring people into the, the media sausage. Mm -hmm. You know, we're both barbecue guys in the yeah. barbecue business. And what why you and I connected in the beginning was that we were always willing to share recipes. We were always willing to, to do things on social media. I mean, I met you and your uncle, yes. Dave, at Fort Worth at the National Barbecue Association Conference where we had a podcast. You know, I was podcasting back in 2017. I, I met you, but now we're doing even more. We're yeah. not doing less, we're doing even more. And we wanna encourage people to go, it's not just about one post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's about really truly understanding that storytelling, content creation, short form video has to be part of who you are every single day Absolutely. as a catering company, as a restaurant, as a barbecue uh, pit master. Right. Well, you know, the schedule for TikTok is ideally we shoot Monday or Tuesday and we post on Thursday at three o'clock. Sometimes it gets pushed to Friday, but every week on either Thursday or Friday, we're posting the full video of TikTok. And then Matt uses the other content throughout the week or the next week, if it's a still photo, or like I said, reels or something like that. Um, one thing, I lost my train of thought. So when you were working with the Sasha group, because I, th I think this is important for, for people to understand, is what was the aha moment? working with them and then actually seeing the results. Like, can you take us back to those first <laughs> where you're like, I don't know if this is going to work because I talk to restaurant owners all the time. I tell them how important this stuff is and I get a blank stare. I mean, I was literally presenting yeah. the National Restaurant Association, room full of people. There's some curious people. We say, stay curious, get involved, ask for help. Right. You won't go to a conference. You don't listen to a podcast. You don't consume a video on YouTube unless you're curious, but then you actually have to do something. And then when you do it, it's like crickets. Am I doing the right thing? Do yeah. I feel nervous? Can you bring us back to taking the advice from the Sasha group and then, and then where did it go from there? Sure. Well, they gave us the advice, like I said, for a weekly show. And I can't remember exactly how it came out, but we were coming up with a name and they had suggested why your barbecue sucks. <laughs> and, and I knew that wasn't going to be the name. <laughs> no, that's not going to be it. <laughs> and so I think it was really natural. I want to look back at Matt. He's over there. But 
I think I just came up with it almost on the spot, yeah. like barbecue like a boss. The tagline for Sweet Baby Ray's is the sauce is the boss. Yeah. And barbecue like a boss, it just like a light came on. I'm like, this is awesome. It's perfect. Uh, the first episode was a selfie video of me telling you the difference between baby back and St. Louis ribs, which when we look back is nothing like our videos now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. But I think we were three or four episodes in and we had something go over like 100,000 views or something. And then we had a couple hit a million. And then we had the infin infamous one that you we're wanted gonna, to ask about. We're gonna, yes, we will ask about that because there is a, a very viral video that actually got taken down and we share all the secrets here. So we're gonna share that story, and, but go ahead. But that's that's when I had the faith of TikTok. When I started seeing those 100,000, 200,000 million you know, view counts, I'm like, and and the not comments. only that, when the comments, the when, when we use Deuce's Wild product in the videos, we get sales online directly related to a big pop off video. There's no question about it. It's not huge numbers, but there is some movement there, you know. So I'm going to set the stage. Everybody knows on earth the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce That's right. it is the, one of the most recognizable brands, one of the most recognizable, the most recognizable sauce. But it became even more recognizable thanks to the founder of a little company called Meta, um, Facebook. <laughs> That's right. So Mark Zuckerberg went and made an announcement of the change from Facebook to Meta. And the internet, being so good as it is, found this bottle of barbecue sauce on his back shelf. It was unbelievable. Can you tell us, take us back to the video that you posted before that event and what happened subsequent? So we were doing the weekly shoots for Barbecue Like a Boss and Matt and I wanted to sprinkle in some more shorter videos. And I said, let's make barbecue sauce. It'll be a super simple video. And I started, my dad's the chef that created Sweet Baby Ray's and I'm gonna show you how to make it. And then I just entered all the ingredients, no amounts, no cooking times, nothing, just super simple. That, that video released about three or four days before the meta announcement and it blew up crazy. Like within four days, it had 5 million views. It was, the comments were unbelievable. Everything was going crazy. Then Zuckerberg has the picture or the bottle of deuces <laughs> or the bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's in the background of his announcement and it started trending on Twitter. The, everything <laughs> went crazy. It made Dude, me so excited. I was yeah. so happy to I see I mean, that. we were getting calls, DMs. <laughs> I was, I everybody was, texting was you. Everybody was reaching out to me on Facebook, calling my uncle, calling my sister. Everybody was talking about it. And like I said, it just was coincidence that we had just posted yes. the other video. So about two days after the uh, meta announcement, I got a call from the attorneys at Ken's asking me to take the video down. So, so they asked you to take it down. Yeah, they asked me to take it down. And so I, the, you, got a, you got an... NWA style cease and desist. Please take this video down. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It no. was. It was just they want to protect their brand. Sweet they Baby want, Ray's wanted to protect right. their brand. And we still have a deal with them where we can use the brand Sweet Baby Ray's for restaurants and catering. And I don't want to upset them. They have been very cordial in the dealings. You know, they come in every time there's a new brand manager for Sweet Baby Ray's. They come to the restaurant here. They hear mine and Dave's story. They taste our food. They know what I mean, we're all about. The food is phenomenal. We ate here before, and the food is absolutely Thank you. phenomenal. Thank you. You can see my face light up. I love I love cooking for people. I love when people have our food and enjoy it. So, but Sweet Baby Ray's, we respected their their decision. I don't agree with it because I think it's free. You know, free well, yeah, marketing you're so, for you're them. So, I mean, we created this show to share secrets. Right. You know, like I said, Sam the cooking guy, he puts out five different cookbooks. Every single thing that he cooks in his restaurant, he shares the recipe. And people tell him all the time. He has attorneys that talk to him and go, Sam, you need to take that down. He goes, yep. no, I actually sell more tacos when I share the recipe of what's in my tacos. Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. I think that's the way everybody should be. And, you know, we were talking about it earlier. The person that's going to make their own sauce is not necessarily a right. Sweet Baby Ray's customer. You right. know, they might make it once or twice, but it's not. They'll never make it this way. Never. They literally will never make never. it this Never, and even you if can you can give me the recipe to your ribs and I know what smoker you use, I know what sauce you use, what rubs you use. There is no way that my team will make the same record. You're you're from the barbecue competition world. Right. Literally, like Memphis in May, all the biggest contests. Like you've been there where people protect their recipes, which is so ironic because literally no one can replicate the same rack. You can't cook the same rack of ribs twice. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. But, you know, 
So, and then after that video, we started seeing slow, consistent growth with the TikTok channel and it's been awesome. You know, we're, we're more pumped now than ever to go forward with it and, you know, keep doing more. I was going to tell you, uh, we already had this conversation off offline, but you know, we want to figure out how to do more. Yeah. And that means, you know, investing more money, hiring a second editor, you know, someone else to film content when we're out at events. That's what's so great about our business. Why I even thought it was a good idea to use the pillar content concept was because we're always doing so, stuff yeah. anyways. We have so many events going on. We have the restaurant, the back of the house catering, the front of the house catering. There's always something going on. So we just need more, you know, people to capture that content to be able to post, you know, good stuff online. Now a quick break from restaurant influencers to welcome our newest sponsor pop menu to the show. We just recently interviewed Brendan Sweeney, the CEO and co-founder of Pop Menu. You've got to check out the episode on restaurant influencers. They have some incredible things that they are doing. I got to meet with him and the entire team at the Chicago National Restaurant Association show. And one of the coolest products that they were talking about was Pop Menu Answering. As a current restaurant owner myself, I know that constant phone calls can get in the way of serving guests in my restaurant but not answering your phone can mean you're losing potential customers. 42% of restaurant guests will eat somewhere else if their call is missed. That is why we recommend Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering is powered by artificial intelligence to answer the simple questions most people call in with, like, do you have outdoor seating? Are you open for dine-in? Do you have brisket still available? Within the Pop Menu platform, you can customize answers for your restaurant and choose the voice your guest hears, which we recommend is your voice. Plus, you can create customized greetings. Pop Menu Answering picks up your phone 24-7, 365 days out of the year. Plus, Pop Menu Answering helps you gain insight into what your potential customers are typically calling about, turning every phone call into an opportunity. Reclaim the power of your phone now with Pop Menu Answering. And for a limited time, our listeners get $100 off the first month. Plus, you can lock in one unchanging monthly rate at popmenu.com slash influencers. Go now to get $100 off your first month and learn more about Pop Menu's full collection of tools at popmenu.com slash influencers. And now back to the show. Give us an idea, a big overview of all the different businesses that you guys are operating. <laughs> <laughs> so basically how it breaks down is SBR Events Group is the parent company to Sweet Baby Ray's Catering, Sweet Baby Ray's Wooddale, which we're sitting in right now, True Cuisine Catering, which is our high-end um elevated event planning business that does weddings and things like that and then there's deuces wild which is the sauce and rub brand right now soon to be restaurant and ghost kitchen someday oh yeah there we go yeah. we're gonna do slow food fast that's right we're doing the amazon of barbecue in chicago i love it <laughs> i love it i love it so give us give the people that are listening just some practical tips you know that they are curious they want to get involved. What kind of advice can you give to someone that's going to be watching this that says, well, I have somebody doing my social media. Mm -hmm. How do you get them to the next step where you go, well, having someone doing social is not really what we're talking about here. Right. You need to be specific on what you want to do. Pick one thing and dive into it and then grow from there. So like that for us, that was the barbecue like a boss. We figured out what was working for us. Then we were able to grow out and use that same content for reels, for YouTube shorts and things like that. But I think it you have to get specific on what you want to do and then be able to grow from there. Because if you try to do just a little bit here, a little bit here, nothing gets done. That's how we started doing it, you know, back you know, five, six years ago, we were just, oh, we'll post this picture. It's a nice picture. We'll do this on Facebook and this and and nothing ever was accomplished. But when once we had a, a focus on what we wanted, then things started to happen. So every business, no matter what, is a family business. Um, I know that your uncle is, is very special to you. I know your father obviously is special mm -hmm. to you. 
what what lessons did you learn from your father? I'm I'm sorry that you lost him last year, but sitting here doing a show for entrepreneur, you know, I know that my grandfather's somewhere looking down on me, very Absolutely. proud to see where from a Bulgarian village to now the National Restaurant Association show to be able to do things that you'd never think you can do in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's those are the lessons we want to teach. But what did your dad teach you? My dad I would first of all I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for my dad. My dad taught me hard work ethic and that you put your heart into it and I will never never forget that and I like I said I wouldn't be where I am today in business if it wasn't for my dad because he worked hard I saw what he was doing I saw him work in the restaurants and work the line or work the front or whatever had to be done to make those restaurants successful and I'll never forget that you know and the restaurant business is hard you can't you you have to love it you have to I say you have to have a servant's heart. You have to want to serve people. It has to make you happy to make other people happy. And that's really what I learned from my dad is an awesome work ethic. And you know, I could never thank him enough for that. Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave. Business partner, working yeah. side by side. What did, what did Uncle Dave teach you? Because I, I can't leave him out of the formula. No. Because I know, I know how much you guys spent time together. Uncle Dave is my friend, my mentor, my business partner, my uncle. Um, you know, any big decision I talk to him about, he's a great human being. He helps out so many people. Uh, I couldn't ask for someone better to be in business with. He is totally on my side. He's got my back 100%. Even, even more now, he, since COVID, he's, you know, working less and letting me run the business more, which is, it's good for me and it's good for him. And uh, he, his biggest statement, which, which I think is awesome, and he says all the time is do the right things for the right reasons every time, no exceptions. And that's what I try to live by, especially in our business. You know, um, he's got the other quote over here is, is the perseverance quote and man, if he, if anyone has perseverance, it's him. They, they worked so hard to grow Sweet Baby Ray's from the ground up when they first What's got the started. Quote? I don't even know. I'll tell you the quote because it made such an impact. The secret ingredient to the sauce. So I'll tell you what the secret ingredient is. It's perseverance. There's no question. Perseverance. So from my grandfather to your father, to your uncle, to who we are, to who we're trying to teach. It's perseverance and it's the perseverance of doing whatever's necessary to grow the business, the family business. You know, one of the things that, that we started doing on this show is doing a social shout out. So building a community, whenever you start a podcast, whenever you start a show, it's a lonely place. It's just like opening up a restaurant, it's just <laughs> like going to your first barbecue contest. You don't know if it's gonna work out. And you know, the people that are supporting this podcast, that are listening every single week, that are showing up every Wednesday and Friday, we do a clubhouse room on the audio app, clubhouse, um, 10 o'clock on Wednesday, 10 o'clock Pacific time, 10 o'clock on Friday Pacific time. But there's one person that I wanna shout out and that's Steven Swiderski. So Steven's part of the Cali BBQ team. Um, I think as business owners, I'm going to start to do a better job of calling out the people that are standing out and stepping up um, because Steven's showing up on these clubhouse calls. He's listening to the podcast. He's doing so much above and beyond. He runs our catering kitchen. He runs our ghost kitchen. But I wanted to ask you, who's somebody that you want to shout out? Because as leaders, it's up to us to, to really, especially on the storytelling business, you know, it's mm -hmm. one thing for us as owners to get in front of the camera, to share the story mm -hmm. of our business, of our family, but it's the staff. It's, you have to lead by example. And our social media policy is to be social, but you gotta have people that are willing to do that, that right. are willing to be uncomfortable. Because you and I were willing to be uncomfortable when we first went on our first podcast, when we first did our first video. Who on your team um, do you wanna shout out? First of all, before I say someone specific, I, we are super blessed to have the team that we do. I have people that started here with us at this restaurant in 2005 as dishwashers that are now running our catering kitchen. Um, I have multiple stories like that. Uh, so the longevity of the people here is not like a normal restaurant or catering business. You know, we see people come and go, but our core group has stuck with us for a long time. So I'm super grateful for that and really, feel like it's a special place to work. We are a family, family business, like you said, and people enjoy that atmosphere. We have a lot of fun in the kitchen, but we work hard, you know, and we get the job done. But one specific person 
that just this weekend really impressed me. His name is Dylan Barry. He's a big sports guy. He loves playing basketball and golf and everything, and he's got that competitive uh, edge to him. He started out doing dishes. Bomba mentality? Yes, started, started out doing dishes for us maybe eight, 10 years ago, and now he works on the hotline. One of my top hotline cooks had to go back to Mexico. His dad's mm-hmm. very sick. I had to be at a really challenging event on Saturday, and he took my place at another challenging wedding. He was the lean chef at that event, $25,000 wedding, steak and shrimp entree. He stepped in and knocked it out of the park. And it gives me goosebumps talking about it because he started just washing dishes and now he's running one of the biggest events we're gonna have all year. And I I told him this weekend, I am so proud of you. I, I got so many calls and texts from the other managers at the event saying how good Dylan did. And it's just, it's it's just an awesome, you know, when people dig down and do a great job like that. It's so, so sweet. Dylan, amazing. Uh, one of the things that we want is, you know, interact, get involved, do something, show up on Clubhouse, tell us your story, email me, Sean at CaliBBQ.media. We want to know what's happening, no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you consume this content. It's so important for us to share the stories of restaurant influencers from all different walks of life. Uh, Deuce, I would love for you, tell people where they can find you online, your preferred handles. We're gonna put links Mm -hmm. in the show notes so you can be a part of this quarter of a million, let's get Deuce to to half a million, to one million, so that we can say, hey, remember when he was just a little tiny star and now (laughs) now he's got 10 million TikTok followers? Um, where, Where can people find you? So the best place to find us is at SBR Catering on TikTok, or Sweet Baby Ray's Catering. I'm sorry, we changed so, it. Anyway. Here we go. All right. Where's the best place? What's your favorite digital playground for people to interact? So right now it's at Sweet Baby Ray's Catering on TikTok, um, SBR Catering on Instagram, and then for our True Cuisine brand, it's True Cuisine. <laughs> True Cuisine Catering or just True, True Cuisine? cuisine. Okay. <laughs> so many handles. Uh, yeah. True Cuisine on Instagram. Um, Those are the best places to find us. And then if you're looking for the Deuces Wild brand, it's deuceswildbbq.com is the website for that. All the same uh, handles on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, And then I'm Deuce Raymond at Instagram. If you guys wanna reach out, leave me a DM, have any questions, um, same on TikTok at Deuce Raymond. Please ask me questions. I love, and people ask, you know, how do, what do I do when my ribs are tough? Or How do you, you know, bottle barbecue sauce? How do Deuce you, is going to be joining us on Clubhouse, <laughs> and he's going to give you all the secrets. If you have a sauce and you're ready to get in the sauce business, it's not an easy business, but Deuce will be on Clubhouse to answer your calls. That's right. Yeah, and to be 100% transparent, we're just getting started doing that ourselves too. But obviously, you know, Dave knows a lifetime of knowledge about it. It's a little bit different now than when he was doing it 20 years ago, but... Um, the concepts are the same, and I'm learning as I go with that process too. So happy to share everything I know and have learned for sure. That's awesome. So we want to give a shout out to Toast. Thank you for an incredible weekend here at National Restaurant Association. Thank you to Pop Menu, the entire Pop Menu team. Um, thank you to Rising Tides Creative, to Aaron, Michon, Andrew, uh, my Wall Chef Wolfpack that's been uh, nice and quiet over in the order. But thank you to you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for writing a review. We are so fired up about this show. We can't wait to bring all these other stories, stories like Deuce, TikTok, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Reddit, whatever a restaurant is doing that's different, that's unique, that's storytelling, we want to share that story so that you can benefit. And the rising tide lifts all ships and it all starts with you. So thank you, Deuce. Thank you for your time. I really, really appreciate it. We'll catch you guys next week. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. 
That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. I will get you the link to the right toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about toast, you implemented toast, you did a toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your toast story with us. DM me today to learn more and be sure to check out toast.